AMD ever be able to apply the same price to performance success they had with Ryzen to their Radeon division? If so, do you all believe this will be, uh, th will, will it be this GPU generation or the next GPU generation or some sometime in the future? <laughs> oh God. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure about this generation. Um, we're not too far away from finding out how that's going to play out. Uh, next generation, uh, with with AMD Radeon, it's always been this generation or next generation. And mm. I mean, remember when Vega was meant to be the B or, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys on that one. Uh, whether we'll see the same success with Radeon that we did with Ryzen. I, again, um, time and time again, we feel like we should have, and there was ways in which they could have pulled that off, but they haven't managed to. So, And, and with Ryzen, they didn't have anywhere near the fastest product. We, we, I mean, we've talked about this time and time again. They just had a product that worked well enough, and mm -hmm. it was very, very competitively priced. And they've sort of done that. Radeon's almost managed to do that. You know, RX uh, 480, 580, 5700 XT. They're not quite at the same level. But realistically, they all they need to do is make a relatively affordable GPU, I would have thought. doesn't have to be mm -hmm. a flagship uh, GPU because they were never able to do that with the CPUs. It just has to be so affordable that the vast majority of people looking at buying a graphics card are just like, I, I can't not buy this. Um, it's, it's offering similar performance to this tier NVIDIA product for, you know, a massive discount, 30%, 40% cheaper. Whether or not they can do that, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but they did it with CPUs. Like, they were throwing away eight core CPUs for just over $100 while Intel was charging uh, two, three times that for four and six core CPUs. I think there's a couple of extra factors that go into it comparing like CPU success versus GPU success. The first one is going back to the Intel situation. There were different nodes at play. So mm -hmm. Intel were basically forced to make their CPUs on their own process nodes, which were kind of struggling at the time. While Whereas in, uh, AMD was able to benefit from TSMC's rapid advancements relative to Intel. Mm -hmm. Because if we look back at like 2010, for example, Intel nodes were far ahead of TSMC in terms of their quality, and yet that stumble for a little while there, which allowed TSMC to catch up and even outperform Intel's nodes, AMD benefited a lot from that, whereas on the GPU side, both NVIDIA and AMD are effectively accessing the same node, so they're not going to get as much of that advantage. And then the second thing as well is that a CPU is a much simpler product. So with the CPU, it's really just about performance that's it, like single thread, multi-thread performance. With GPUs these days, there's a lot of the software side of things that goes into it as well. Like Ryzen didn't have to compete with the DLSS type feature from Intel. Mm -hmm. It was just the performance. That's all they really needed to do. Whereas with Radeon, it's about the performance, but then also the software side of things, the drivers, all sorts of different People, aspects. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I still, and what you're saying is valid. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's only part of the picture. So with the software, you know, people were saying Ryzen sucks because it's unstable. The BIOS support's not as good. Sure. The motherboards suck and the list goes on. And also they weren't competitive in terms of performance anyway. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> so, performance is the most important thing, right? You've got to, you've got to so get that price to performance I, down first. Even like first gen Ryzen, um, you know, the, the Zen Plus update, um, Zen 2, they were all competitive given the price but they weren't up there in terms of top-tier performance. Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I think while that's a factor, I think, in my opinion, a larger factor is just the mismanagement, the mishandling, mm -hmm. the failing of these launches. You can't have a product like the 7900 XT, which is a very important product. I'm, I'm certain we heard stuff like they had significantly more 7900 XTs to sell than they did 7900 XTXs. Yeah. So the 1700 XT was a key product for them. They were very concerned about it at launch. They really needed that one to go well. I ended up re-reviewing it six or seven months after release, and it had improved by 20% in terms of cost per frame. That's a new generation of GPU. So just let that sink in. The 7900 XT at launch, six months later, was offering 20% better value. Mm -hmm. start there guys like yeah that's insane yeah like when i'm bringing up things like the features there's obviously a value 
position that makes people not really concerned about the software side of things. Yeah. I think it probably means that price to performance, they probably have to price it a little bit lower if their features aren't competitive. Whereas if they, there was no software to concern, be concerned about at all, you would just make sure the price to performance is key. Yeah, and even then it's somewhat irrelevant. While they're all relevant factors, you, we've already seen that with like the 7900 XTX was 20% better value in terms of cost per frame than the RTX 4080, which we thought was a particularly poor product. And it didn't sell. Mm -hmm. And even today, it's still with, with the pricing discounts compared to the 4080 Super, they maintained that 20% margin with the mm -hmm. same product. And, and that's not a Ryzen margin. Ryzen was much more affordable than that. Well, it doesn't matter. It, the, the point is, it hasn't worked. 20% <laughs> is not enough to sell radio and GPUs because they tried it for a whole generation and evidently didn't sell enough of them. So anyway, there's multiple factors there for why they haven't mm -hmm. been competitive. Whether there's enough room there to be competitive, I mean... They it, lowered the price of the... Pro they lowered the price of the 7900 XT by 20%, you were saying. Yeah. So it's BS that there's no room for that. There was you said AMD couldn't come to us and say there was no room for us to make the seventy nine hundred XT cheaper. That's just BS. They made it cheaper in six months. And so it's the, factually wrong. And the problem is the hyper people still in their minds, you know, gamers Nexus Harbor unboxed, pick a review outlet. I don't think there was too many that were terribly favorable towards the seventy nine hundred XT. So you get six months down the track, six months down the track rather, um, and people still have that, you know, they, they feel quite negatively towards the 7900 XT. Yeah, people don't care not, about a re-review. It was not a well-received product. Well, it's not even that they don't care, it's just that we did a re-review. How many people did a re-review? Mm -hmm. I think 300,000 people to this day have watched the re-review. And even then, a lot of those people probably already made their purchasing decision and made their purchase, so they were just watching it out of interest. Mm. Uh but they needed to launch with that price. It needed to be that 20% better value upon release. And then I think, well, it definitely would have been much better received. I think a lot of reviewers would have been saying, forget about, you know, the 4070 Ti or whatever, just get this, you know, GP much faster, more VRM. Yeah, the ray tracing is not as good, but, you know, there's very yeah. few good ray tracing titles anyway, so it's not worth paying a massive premium for those games and so on and so forth. I, I just think it would have been much better received. I mean, it just makes sense that it would have been. Well, that's what Ryzen did, right? Like it launched with a good price and then got better, even better than that over time. Um, you know, products that's like true. the, the 1800X, they weren't amazing because I think that was a $500 US CPU at launch or 400 Yeah, there was the 1700. There was the 1700 yeah. was really good value. The six core models were very competitive in price because, again, at the time, Intel was selling you like four core, four thread models for the same money or even more money. And then they repeated that gener like they repeated that for at least two to three more generations by continuing to deliver like a really compelling $200 CPU and then making that CPU like $100 in a year. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, with the CPUs, they essentially made the really well uh, priced part, like the Ryzen 7 1700, and they had the 1700X, which was not as good than the 1800X, which was really bad, but they were the same part. So it'd be like launching the 7900 XT mm -hmm. and then the 7900, which is just the, so the non-X version, which is down clocked by 5%, but that's the $750 model and the other one's the dumb $900 model. And then yeah. the uninformed people maybe buy the dumb model and then, you know, that gets pretty negative reviews, but all the reviews focus on the 7900 that gets glowing reviews Buy this. That's the one to get. So I don't know if that's a strategy. I mean, I'm not necessarily recommending that. I think just make a good product and make it at the right mm. price. But we've talked about this heaps in the past. Uh, we've pretty much been saying the same stuff and AMD has been doing the same stuff. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, we've been saying they should do this. They don't do this. Same outcome. So we'll see what they do uh, in like a month. <laughs>